Hey what's up guys here in the workshop today and I'm about to show you guys how to sharpen a knife. Now the knife we have here is a classic and I just made it even better. Let's have a closer look. What we have here is an Ontario Rat one. But you haven't seen one of these in a while. This when I got into the knife community this was like the knife. A Rat one was one of the best. Um, a Delica 4 was out then and that was like the thing too to have now knives in this uh, in this price bracket aren't super popular at least not from the the people that speak in my comment section and stuff anymore just from what I glean but this knife I've modded a couple times uh, I've gone through a couple sets of scales I just modded it for the last time and you can actually get it by the time you're watching this video because it's going up on my website for sale so what I did here it's completely factory blade I didn't do anything to the blade but what I did is I put on some purple micarta scale sanded them up oiled them so you have a nice matte finish it's not like a polished it's got uh, just a light texture on there those, all those screws are still that black finish. I think this thing looks awesome. It's in pristine condition. I also mirror polished that pocket clip and all the liners around there. It comes with like a bead blasted finish from factory. I did a polish on those as well. I think this thing just looks awesome. We're going to sharpen it up though and get it ready for the site. I'm going to show you how to do that. But if you want this knife, or if you just want to check out my web store, maybe you want a hat or something like that, head over to KyleKnowsWithy.com and see if you can find it. Now over the last few years I've shown you guys a lot of different ways to sharpen, a lot of different budget levels catered to, right from uh, a couple dollars worth of sandpaper getting shaving edges up to uh, kind of like budget wet stones and stuff. I've shown several different types of those right up to like my highest level going through all the steps for every different stone today I'm gonna to take just shy I think of that top level so I'm just gonna use a couple stones here to achieve the finish on this knife so you're gonna be in not too much on the budget but I've had my stones all soaking here I do have the Nanoa stone holder people always ask I get emails about this this is just a basic Nanoa stone holder from polisfinest.com and it is lovely. Uh, I didn't see a stone. I sharpened for probably a year and a half, two years without a stone holder. Did not see it necessary in my mind. Just I was sharpening with my stone just light on a shop towel. It didn't matter. But I found out after I decided to spend a few bucks, I couldn't imagine why I ever went without one. So if you don't have one, head over to Paul's Finest. And, uh, and have your mind changed. So good. I'm going to start out here. Hmm. Don't want to start with this one. No, I'm going to start with a Nanowas Super Stone, which is a little bit, a little bit cheaper of a stone. So let's go with the Nanowas Super Stone. This is the 400 grit, which is a beautiful, beautiful stone. I'm a big fan of Nanowas Super Stone series also purchased at paulsfinest.com. <laughs> Paul's Finest did not sponsor this video. Paul's Finest did not give me this 400 grit stone. Bought it myself a few years ago and I absolutely love it. Now the edge on this knife is not terrible as it is but to make it worth showing you guys I'm going to drag it over a diamond file a couple times. We are reflecting light all the way along there now. So as in all my other videos if you're a long time follower I would suggest lying your knife flat on the stone like this. You don't need to lay it down there if you don't want to scratch your finish. I'm just doing that for uh, demonstration purposes. But you want to tilt it up until shadow disappears right under the apex of your your secondary bevel or like what is your micro bevel or your cut edge. As soon as that shadow disappears that's the angle you're holding for sharpening assuming you want to keep with factory bevel. So I'm going to do that starting coming towards me. So I'll lay it on the stone I'll tip it until that shadow disappears and that is my angle. Now this blade has such a long 
straight edge and then a short bevel or a short round nose sorry so I'll put a little bit of effort on the flat first kind of get that close before I start working on the round I constantly get the question of how many strokes on each side of the bevel or do you count or I do not count so it's getting a little bit dry now I don't count um, I just I go kind of by time in my mind I go kind of by how the edge is progressing just trying to evenly spread that water over my stone there now so yeah I don't go by time or I don't go by number of strokes sorry I just uh, work the stone check it every once in a while like I'll do here now I'll see that I'm staying right on that bevel perfectly and we've already just started to bring that edge to an apex so our light is just gone now I'll start focusing on that round now what I'll do is I'll start on the flat so I'll keep it on that sort of straight edge there I like to keep my second hand up near the bevel and a finger at the tip and I'll usually round forward and into the stone so I won't usually just lift I'll lift and I'll turn my edge into the stone like that so it helps to start off on that straight again so you remember your angle lift and turn in and that will follow your bevel all the way to the tip assuming that you get that tip all the way in there okay so as expected I've just reached an apex all the way along our edge there not really a burr forming yet but just just about to we're just about there so what I'm gonna do now is just a handful of back and forth strokes on each side just remember remember I'm evening out then that transition in case there might be any type of a break there I like to do this once I'm done that I'll switch now after those few full length passes what I'm looking for is for a burr to be established now how I how I determine that is for one you could use your sight you should be able to pick up a slight burr indicated by uh, with some light on it so you can kind of see a little light glimmer at that edge. It's hard to explain, but it's just a certain way that rough burr grabs a little bit of light, like it refracts differently because the angle is different from your bevel. Also, I find, like with a woolly sweater like this, if you kind of rub in stropping strokes, you can look and you can kind of see a, a few little woolies and little strands and stuff kind of caught up in the burr, very small. Another way I find is if I draw my finger in reverse over the edge so not straight across but back up over my edge like this I can actually feel resistance and if you think about the angle you're using there shouldn't be resistance in that direction but I do have that there now so since I have that burr and you really do need that burr because I have that it's usually a little more strong on one side than the other I always find depending on how I finish off now I'll switch to just cutting strokes and I'll do hmm, I don't really have a number for you I'll work maybe I'll say 10 passes on each side I'll do single strokes like this remember to keep that angle constant I find these passes, uh, I'll use a little bit, of, little, little bit less pressure as well by the way, but I find these passes help remove that burr and give you a nice hard edge. So it'll just kind of take away that burr, especially on this soft steel. It's not that hard to remove that burr. Now if you've done a really excellent job with a 400, like there's so much grab to that edge there now, and I can even manage to pop a few strands 
of hair there just with the 400 it's far from being able to glide off hairs but you can manage to snip off a couple little hairs there now my next script from that 400 is going to be a 1000 now this happens to be the Shapton glass 1000 so this is a lovely stone also from Paul's finest now this one was actually a gift from Paul's finest which is pretty awesome but we're gonna use it I'm a big fan of a 1000 grit stone I feel like you can do so much on 1000 including stopping on a 1000 a 1000 you could get an edge just a lovely edge and if it's a high performing 1000 grit stone you can really cut away some dents and nicks as well you don't need to get down all the time to the to the real hardcore cutters so if you have something like this if you just had one stone assuming you're not brutal with your knife use if you just had one stone you could get a 1000 and you could just that would be your grip combine that with a strap then I mean you've got a decent setup gonna repeat the exact same steps now with this 1000 forward and back strokes now there's a big difference between having a slurry on your stone which with a harder stone having a slurry can really improve cutting performance but there's a big difference between having a slurry on your stone versus having your stone kind of glaze over and I find these harder stones like these Shapton glass can really glaze over it's like the, the top surface of the stone all the pores kind of clog up with metal particle and your cutting performance is reduced and you can see back here the stone is still cutting nicely fairly clean but up here where I've been going around sort of the the turn with the front bevel of the knife it's beginning to glaze there in the center and usually just a little bit of water you can kind of just kind of just rub it off there and it's not, not a big issue but if you notice your stone starting to slow down and you're kind of slipping over the stone a little bit more that's likely your issue so pay attention to that when you're sharpening so with a slight burr detected I'm going to switch over to the single cutting strokes again and just clean up that edge reducing pressure maintaining that same angle I'm going to switch out this 1000 with the last stone of the day and that will be the Nanawa 3000 grit superstone remember I love those superstone series and this one is just golden this 3000 gives such a good finish start with forward and back motions maintaining my bevel gonna work with for a little while until I've uh, polish the entirety of the bevel till it looks good and till it feels good we should have a very minor burr I found that with the finer the grit the minor the burr gets each time so it's a little harder to detect notice the stone starting to glaze a little bit right here so I'm getting a steel particle is really building up there so I'll just scrub that off just kind of just displace it and you're good again it really changes the feeling of the stone now the final strokes I just cleaned up my stone a little bit the final strokes are just cutting strokes again on the 3000 getting nice and white with my pressure at this time don't go changing your angle just because you're on a finer stone or using less pressure make sure you're just maintaining it how you were in the beginning Now that we're done with the stones, on to strapping. And I find strapping to be a very effective way to both clean and maintain my knives and to finish up with sharpening. I just find it really adds to my edge. Now, my favorite combination is a rough sided leather with compound and then to finish on a smooth finished veg tan leather with no compound, so just clean. Now, 
I happen to have two separate straps here. This is one that I never ever really finished. This is an old one that I had years ago. If you want a nice new strap, you probably saw the title clip at the beginning. If you want a nice new strap that incorporates both of these, uh, and you can throw in a backpack, head over to my website, connellsley.com, and get yourself one. I've even included a block of compound, the same stuff that I use right here, this rouge. So I'll start off with the rouge or the compound because that's the more aggressive so you always move from the coarsest to the finest and we'll just do backwards motion so the opposite of cutting strokes maintaining the same angle but we're just doing everything in reverse we're pulling away from our edge so you may be five to a side or something like that this will just start for one, I find it makes your edge look a lot better because it just uh, evens out the polish on your edge a little bit. This red compound here, the particular stuff I have, it's a knife, knife maker's compound. I get it from a, a polishing site. just find it really good. It comes in big blocks, but I've cut it down to just handy little size to get you quite a number of strappings because once you dress your strap once with compound it's good for for quite a while so what I will do after that I'll just give my edge a little wipe in case I have a little compound left on there or something that's to keep this strap as clean as possible so after giving a little wipe I'll do the exact same thing now this this material has almost no resistance and I will use a little bit of pressure just to knock that edge right in line and I have found this combination this is why I designed the straps on the website like I did this combination has been just perfect and I have tried quite a few different combinations different leathers different materials and this is what I like now you can see that lovely edge polish there I can show you with the lighting, kind of tough to see. But there it is, and of course the results speak for themselves. So you have a, just a beautifully shaving edge there now. Now if you like today's video, be sure to actually hit that like button, the little thumbs up right below the video there. It would be awesome if you would do that. If it's your first time here, subscribe to my channel. Comment down below if you so feel to. If you like this knife, go over to colonosery.com and purchase it. Treat yourself. Maybe you don't want this knife, or maybe it'll already be sold by the time you're there. In that case, pick yourself up a strap. Thank you guys for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and do some more work here. We'll see you in the, in the next video.